This is Lady Boulay, and I hope you're having a marvelous day. Today, as we continue to explore African American culture, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite ancestors, Booker T. Washington. I ran up from slavery when I was in college, and it had a strong impact on me then, because by then, Booker T. Washington had come to Tuskegee, built the great institution, and he had already passed. But his legacy lived on. I have a brother that went to Tuskegee. He also played football at Tuskegee. So he is a very proud Tuskegee Tiger. But Booker T. Washington is someone that I always come back to because there's something about him and his character that really moves me in a special way. We African Americans all are continuing to strive for some type of um, elusive equality with white people. And Booker T. Washington is a good person to study because Booker T. Washington was not trying to be equal to white people. From his writings, it appears that he was trying to be better than white people. When you read his works and look at how he moved in the country, he only had respect for people who had worked really hard to achieve what they, what they achieved. He didn't care. Skin color didn't really make a big difference with him, although he did really love his people. You can tell by the things that he said and the things that he did that he really loved his people. He wanted black people to move away from the idea of equality and move into the idea of excellence. He had striven for excellence in his life and had achieved it. So from my perspective, he wasn't trying to socialize or integrate with white people. His interest in white people seemed to be limited to whether or not they could help him with his personal goals or with what he was trying to achieve at Tuskegee. Booker T. Washington had something that seems to be underrated in today's society. Booker T. Washington had respect for himself. He had come up from slavery. As a child, he had worked in salt furnaces and coal mines. He had taught himself how to read and had, without almost no help from his family, put himself through Hampton Institute. This man was no slouch. He believed that work was the engine that propelled life. He had been born on a slave plantation. He was bright and he was observant. He saw that the slaves were keeping the plantations going. Booker T. Washington admired the fact that the slaves were hard workers, that they mastered their jobs. Many of them took pride in their jobs and they did their jobs well. Now we learn a hundred and something years later that slaves really created this economy that has made this the richest country in the world. Booker T. Washington recognized it back in the 19th century. He had little patience for slave masters and their sons who did not value work, did not know how to do any work, and didn't do any work. Booker T. Washington had respect for the people who were actually doing the work. On his journey to excellence, Booker T. Washington experienced horrendous racism. Some of the experiences that he recounts in up from slavery are cringeworthy. He was born in 1856. He died in 1915. So he was in the heat of the battle of slavery and Jim Crow. But he neither let those things diminish or degrade him. He let them propel him to excellence. And these are the sayings that he left behind to let us know that you don't let anyone deter you from your goal of excellence. So I want to share 10 of my favorite sayings from Up From Slavery. Number one, the individual that can do something that the world wants done in the end will make his way regardless of his race. Number two, the actual sight of a first class house that a Negro has built is 10 times more potent than pages of discussion about a house that he ought to build or perhaps could build. Number three, gradually by patience and hard work, 
Order was brought out of chaos. Just will be true of any problem if we stick to it with patience and wisdom and earnest effort. Number four, it is long ago that I learned this lesson that I would permit no man, no matter what his color might be, to narrow and degrade my soul by making me hate him. Number five, few things help an individual more than to place responsibility upon him and to let him know that you trust him. Number six, my experience in getting money for Tuskegee has taught me to have no patience with people who are always condemning the rich because they are rich and because they do not give more money to objects of charity. Number seven, as a rule, the place to criticize the South when criticism is necessary is in the South, not in Boston. Number eight, although I have never before said so in so many words, the time will come when the Negro in the South will be accorded all the political rights which his ability, character, and material possessions entitle him. Number nine, there is one type of individual that I dread. I mean the crank. I have become so accustomed to these people that I can pick them out at a distance when I see them elbowing their way up to me. And number 10, the number of people who stand ready to consume one's time to no purpose is almost countless. Those are my 10 favorite sayings, but if I were going to pick one that I thought encompasses everything that I've learned from Booker T. Washington, it would be this. Be the best. The world demands the best. In closing, I will say that I am very much aware of the debate that has raged in the African American community as to whether or not Booker T. Washington or Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois had a better idea about how to advance the black race at the time that they lived. I believe that both men care deeply about their people and about the race and about advancing us to the best of their ability. But Tuskegee is a true legacy. It is a physical plant that you can visit. Tuskegee is known the world over and it is still turning out world-class students that are going out into the world and doing outstanding things. A legacy is a legacy. And I believe that what someone leaves behind that continues to grow and build and nurture the race is more important than an argument about what someone should do. Booker T. Washington's legacy stands for itself.